Hi, good afternoon everyone. So today, my name is Dr. Ta. Today I'm going to go over the secret to a better golf game, uh, especially focus on your biomechanics. And the answer to the most important questions is, are you fit for golf? Now, let's go over really quick about my background. So I'm Dr. Ta. I'm a certified chiropractic and I, I'm part of the team in the Southern California, the Multidisciplinary Integrated Health Center we call United Multi Care Health Center. So what we have on our team, or we have the medical, we have chiropractic, we have acupuncture, and uh, we have physical therapy. And also we have to do something very special, it's also called functional medicine. I am one of the doctors on board, uh, and we have total over seven doctors on staff. Now we have two office locations. The one location located in the city of Rosemary, and the other location is located in Roland, city of Roland Heights. Now, that's enough about me, so let's go straight into the, uh, the talk today. So, now we all know golf is the greatest and most frustrating game in the world, okay? So, the question is, is, is it really about me or is it about the, the club? Uh, the, the best club to find out that actually helped me to improve my swing or improve the, play, the way I play my game. So, we go over a little bit about that. Okay, let's see. Now, well, let, let's take a look at some of the number first. In the 1974, the handicap for men are 16 holes. In the 1974, for the woman is 29. An average round for golf is 103. Okay, so what happened in 26 years later? In the year 2000, the handicap for men are still 16. In the 2000, the handicap for women is 29. An average round of golf is 103. So there's no change. Maybe it's probably not the club that, that we're talking about. So the, the secret for the bear golf is the most important thing is the improving the flexibility, the stability in your posture, your swing mechanic, and how is your brain really worked during the time that you swing your club. So overcoming the four, four barrier, that's the most important thing that a lot of golf uh, golf golfer that's his most important is nutrition, the environmentals, and the allergen and the pain is the thing that we always suffer for when we play for a long period of time in golf game. We start having any aches and pain, especially in the shoulder and lower back, or sometimes that we see the, uh, the golfer has the, the difficult in, in the swing because of the knee pain, so that we go over that also. Golfer achieve ninety percent of their peak muscular effort when driving a golf ball. So that is the quote that the research from Paul that his book is the biomechanic of golf. Okay. So let look let's look over the stability versus the flexible. So now when you know that you, the, the the part of the golf game that involves mostly in your hip, your shoulder and your head and eye movement, especially how it controls your swing when you look at the drive. And the flexibility, noted that the PGA instructor as being the number one of key hitting the farthest and, Im and improving your game. We are, the most important thing is we aren't as young as we used to be. The tighter muscles and ligament that cause us prone to be more injured because the thing is why why the tighter muscle and tight ligament cause more injuries. We all know that the muscles have only two functions. Number one is to protect and to move the joints. And why are the tighter muscles cause a lot more issues in golfer is this. So when when that muscle is trying to protect and to move the joint and the joint are not really stable and unable to move very well, so the, the muscles all tense up. So when it tense up, it's trying to pull down and hold that unstable joint in place. But because we continue it continuously, repetitively, that using that unstable joint, it causes a lot of wear and tear. And the, as the process goes through for a long, chronic, long period of time, now we cause a lot of inflammation. Now inflammations cause more issues. The, 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 the normal muscles now become more scar, which means scar is the one that really not have a optimal flexibility that to be able to stretch. So when scar tissue that losing the flexibility, it's easier prone to injuries when you have a sudden twist or certain movement 
that your body is not ready for that force. How far can you hit the ball? That's very important questions, right? So let's look at the swing arc. If your left hand to a 9 o'clock position and the club head is at 85 miles per hour, the yard you mostly average you could carry is 200 yards. Now if the left hand to a 10 o'clock position and the club head at 110 miles per hour, the yard you carry is 225 yards. If the left arm is to 11 o'clock positions and the club head at 115 miles per hour, the yard could carry 240 yards. And last but not least is the left arm at 12 o'clock positions and the club head is 125 miles per hour. Now the yard you could carry is 270 yards. The Tiger Wood is at 135 miles per hour and 300 plus yards. So, what's the secret that he could be able to carry that high of a speed? And the longest distance. The sequence is the bending forward of the arm. The loss of energy equal to the loss of the distance. So when your body is losing the energy, if you had, a, you thought you might have a great swing, but you get in the wrong position. So when you swing, your energy it dissipates. So you're not losing the distance of the ball that it, 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 when you hit them. So hyperextended elbow equal mid elbow pain. Now the, the thing is you swing with there's not much of the bending at the elbow because the reason why when you bend the elbow that's going to cause dissipate the energy that causing your force is not as uh, it cost decreasing your force and it costing the ball won't go to the longest distance as you want at the same time predispose yourself to something called golfer elbow. Now, uh, the next thing is especially if you can't swing well and your body is not flexible enough to allow you to turn at the optimal angle that for you to be able to swing that club, that will change the whole game. Now, as a chiropractor, I always focus on something that's called spinal flexibility and spinal stability. Now, in order to swing, your body had to be able to optimally to turn at a certain angle. And at the same time, it had to be stable enough to be able to hold that spine in place when you at that angle. So I always recommend the patients do something called spinal floor twist. So that's the best way that you be able to maximize your spinal flexibility and stable down by strengthening the muscle at the same time. As you can see in the picture, uh, one of my patients is laying on his side, and then he turned. His hip is still be able to. His hip is still staying in the same place, but his upper body is completely, when he opens his arm, it's almost like on flat on the floor. And the posture st stability that also important in terms of the balance is because the thing is when you have stable spine, you'll be able to balance yourself and be able to distribute the force equally because as a symmetric being, if you split it in half, we have left hand and right hand, right leg and left leg. Now, if you're not stable, you're, gonna be, you're not going to be able to distribute the force equally on both sides of the body. Now, you tend to lean on one side more versus the other one. That's caused a lot of balance issues, and at the same time, it costs a huge amount of wear and tear. A great example is this. The reason why a car has alignment is the reason is when it dissipates all the force equally in four wheels of a car. Now, if the car alignment is off, so which means that one side had much more force than the other one. So when that happened, is the tires start to wear out on the side that have constantly higher pressure, higher force, versus the one that have less pressure. Now imagine if you don't have the alignment correctly, so you continue to have wear and tear on your tire. And this, but in this case, you have more wear and tear on your spine. That's caused faster degeneration process. That would cost us more aches and pain, and it costs us more uh, inability to, to, to play at our optimal at, at our optimal game. So, how does the spine really affecting your swing? Now, we, we look at the human spine. We look at the skeleton. So, on top, you have your skull, you have your neck your thoracic, your lower back, and your tailbone. Now those are the solid structures. It's made up of two curvature. Now, number one is called primary curve and secondary curve. 
Now, most of us know that the secondary curve was when, uh, when the child started to turn over, learn how to crawl, start to look up the first time, and, and, and learn how to walk. So why is the curvature so important that, that most chiropractors focus, uh, focus in it? Because the curvature has helped us to maintain the most stable positions, the strongest angle for us to fight against one thing, gravity. Because gravity is what affecting us every single day. If we're losing the curvature, which means that all the patients see in the clinic with the anterior head carriage, the head moving forward, the gravity pulled down, you lose that curvature, so all the muscles around them become more tight, more stretched, because now they're losing that optimal curve, so they're going to work much, much harder trying to pull that skull back in the center line so it's less force. Now all your muscle is constantly under stress when you lose these curvature. So when the muscles become stretch, become tensions, become pain, which means that a high inflammation process happen, at the same time the body is going to create a lot of scar tissues. And we all know scar tissues won't contract as normal as soft, normal soft tissues. Now that predisposes you to a lot of injuries. Now, as you can see on three pictures in front of you, you see the S-shaped curve, the normal curve, and the C-shaped curve. You see one side, they, how it correlates to the X-ray at the bottom with the S-curve. You can see this, uh, the, the arch between the tailbone and the L5, but on the normal one, you, you see it's a, the structure more supported, and then for the C-shape, everything put back to the, push to the back. So what's the difference between those three, S-curve, normal curve, or C-curve? Now let's go over the hyper-lower doses, which means that you arch in your back. The, it's caused a limit to your spinal range of motion. So when that happens, it's, it's decreased your power, it's prone to spinal disc injury, or what we usually say is a bulging of the disc. And the hyper-lower doses, which means that you don't arch your back much, but actually you're humping your back. It's causing decrease in lack of the lumbar curvature. At the same time, it's also limit your spinal range of motions, decrease the power, and also degenerations, dis causing degeneration, disc disease, and it weakens the spinal musculature. It causes much, much easier for you to have sprain and strain injuries. So where does where does back posture coming from? Is, is it come from work or is it come from everyday routine that we we do? It's actually all because the thing during the golf game or golf swing is required rotation, lateral bending, extension, but not flexion. But most of us are in flexions for most of the time. Now imagine you sit in front of the computer. Most often we're humping over like the guy in the pictures right now. He starts staring at the screen. That is a flexion posture that I'm talking about that we all suffer from. Now, posture analysis is what we do in the clinic. We do on uh, most of our patients because we really want to see how it correlates, how is our patient's body is doing, how it's looking physically. So now you can see on the left side is a skeleton. There's, a, the, there's certain line drawings. The first line, you can see the shoulder line and the pelvic line, the knee line and the ankle line. And you can see on the right side, I explained a little bit, this toe has a point straight ahead, the hip directly above the feet. And the level of the hip, the level of the shoulder, the, 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 straight, the straight neck is the ear above the shoulder, rotation of the hip and the shoulder. So let's go over that, what that means. So the, the elevation of the shoulder is kind of shifting and equal pressure. Obviously, you could see uh, in this case, I'm looking at the right side. The shoulder starts to have the arrow pointing down. So that's right side is leaning a little bit more, which means that that one might carry more force than the left side, and especially the, the tilt of the pelvic that changing your swing during the motions because obviously you could see the one that had the arrow coming down, which means that side have more pressure, more wear and tear, and that caused more, more, more problem when you swing. Now, how can you change that? I always recommend the patient doing something called lower body strength stability that allow you to maintain the proper position during the pivot and generate the power and drive the club through the downswing. And how we do that? So we're going to perform that through something called air bench. Like you can see in the pictures, 
I have one of my patients have his back against the wall and it, it's actually showing how a uh, test for the strength of your low body so we see how low the patients could actually go down and how long they'd be able to maintain in that position now many my patients can't at the beginning because due to the the, the the instability involved in the low back and the aches and pain. So that is the one way we could find out how stability is your lower back. And the importance of the lower body strength is is make a huge difference because that is what it's it's involved. The, your, your lower body is it's target muscles that we're looking at. It's your glute, your hamstring, and your quad. All of them have to work together. Now, what's really different between the amateur golf and professional golfer using their low body strength? The, the amateur one only use 50% of their low body weight. Now, the professional transfer about 90% of their body weight to their lower body. And, and uh, the most important thing also, we had to look at the foundation stability. The feet rock, rock back and the feet more stable is on the right pictures right now on the screen. And you can see the feet rock back is on the left does not have a lot of stability on it. So what causes it? The cause is the weak of the low body musculature that unable to stable, stabilize in your spine. And the loss of the structure stability in your feet, the falling of the arch. Okay? The falling of the arch, what we do in the clinic, we also have the patients to perform something called foot scan. So foot scan is we send a laser reading to see how much pressure the heat reading that has to see how much pressure you put on one feet versus the other one. Now we want to have equally force distributed uh, uh, among the, the ball of eight, the heel, the toes, and the front part of the feet. The, the, the flat feet is it's unequal and the, and the pressure is not equally between left and right feet. And so what's the point of the all of that that I've been talking about? All of those points is we put together this lecture is about how we could prevent the injuries happen during you play a golf game. At the same time, how to improve you during the golf game. So 60% of golfers will have at least one serious back related injury. 60%. Men, of course, always complain with low back pain. A woman also often complain of the elbow and wrist injuries. Now look at on the screen, I have some statistics. The left one is for the professional, the right one is for the amateur. So the wrist and hand professional is 37%. The low back 24%, the shoulder 10% injuries, elbow 7%, and the knee is 7% injuries. And for the amateur, the lower back is 35%, the elbow 24%, and the wrist and hand is 20%, shoulder 12%, and the knee is 9%. So the number a little high compared. Uh, compared between the amateur and the professional. So the amateur is more predisposed to injuries because they not prep the body, the, the stability and flexibility in the spine is not there. And the most important when you play any kind of sport, I always recommend the patients to warm up. Warm up is very essential because it prep your body before a game, increase your flexibility, increase your stability. So the survey shown that only half of the golfer do any warm up at all. That's only half, that number is too low. And of course, that's the reason why we predispose our body to injuries. Only one in ten golfers do any stretching of the major muscle before golf. That's ridiculous. Only one out of ten. And those are, there are the proper warm up. That's why I want to go over in this lecture is, you, sh you should include three things. Number one is aerobic, stretching, and time practice range. So you, sp so I'm going to go over what those three are. So aerobic. Aerobic is the one, the one type of exercise that increases your heart rate, get your blood flowing, and, and you could do through brisk walking around the parking lot, you could do some jumping jack, or you could jog in place. That is one a great aerobic exercise before the golf game. The next one, you need to stretch major group of the muscles to improve your flexibility and decrease your, your, your risk to get sprain and strain injuries. Now, these are the group of muscles I want you to stretch. The ankle stretch, the quad, the hamstring, the glute, the hip, the mid back, the shoulder, the wrist, and the neck. Now, it's very, there's, there's many details to go over how specifically 
you just stretch those group of muscles, but in, in for the short amount of time we put together for this lecture, I, I put some of the example of how the patient should do, and those pictures you could see right there. And next one is practice range. It start with the edge and work your way to the driver, and start with the half swing at about nine o'clock, and then focus on the clean contact, not the distance. Get your form correctly. And the next one is brain-based eyes dominancy assessment. That's very important, and I'm going to explain why. The ocular light therapy is a method that we use here in the, the clinic for the therapeutical sending the light through the eye in order to stimulate the brain function. The light through the eye enables us to open up the neurological pathway into the specific brain structure, significantly affecting the brain and every cell of the body. So what is eye light therapy? What does it improve? Of course, it's the eye th the eye light therapy will in improve your visual system, enhance the brain and eye plasticity, the hip and shoulder turn, the timing, the balance, and the coordination. So in summary, what I want is and say is just four main points is you can improve your game without changing your swing by improving your flexibility and stability in your spine. By improving the flexibility and stability you can prevent golf related injuries. That's what we want to do. Golf and athletic event and require a proper warm up, understanding the brain dominancy and play with the balanced nervous system. So what do we do? So we do the 14-point flexibility analysis in our clinic. We do the posture, the foot arch analysis, brain dominancy analysis, co corrective stretch and strength plan, and co corrective posture plan. That's what we do for all our golfer in the clinic. So what's stopping you from becoming a better golfer? That's the most important questions that all the golfer should think about. So that's what we're here for. As a group of doctors, now we focus on something that I, I really want to explain to all my patients is we don't do standard eye health care in this clinic. What we do, we put the patient in the center, we do thorough analysis, we look at the body as a whole, how your body really functions in terms of every single joint, muscles balance, brain balance, and stability. And I hope this lecture will help you to understand a little bit more why and how and how could you prevent those injuries and how can you improve your ability to play better at in terms of focus on your spine and your muscle stability and flexibility. And thank you for your time.